Hello there everyone and thank you for coming today. Today we are taking a look at the new software of Archicad called Paramo as well as uh, how we can change this and create forms with that back and forth as objects and then also kind of showing you the counterpart within Rhino and Grasshopper. So if you kind of want to kind of want to know how we did that, we go along this video and I show you how you can go step by step and create your own objects within Archicad and Rhino and Grasshopper. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off with the difficult one, I would say, the Archicad um, area here. It's called Permo, which is a tutorial, or no, which is a um, software which was normally used as the GDL input for creating um, certain objects within Archicad. You have your list of parameters here on the left. They are rather basic. You have like integer series, um, shapes, and then also stuff how you can move your shapes around and then certain mathematical ways of using it. The um, way of using is actually quite similar to Grasshopper for example. Um, you can double click the canvas and click your objects. You can, um, if you want to go back and forth, then you can press Control shift and use it back and forth. This as well, as you see, also works in Grasshopper. Also with double clicking the canvas, you get your own objects. Um, what's interesting about this is that you basically have it uh, in the library manager. So if I just show you this in um, within Archicad, you basically have your um, your thing, and then you can use file, go on file, uh, libraries and objects, and then you can go to your Paramo manager, and within there, this uh, little window pops up where you can click on your um, objects that you create and you can obviously put those objects within other libraries as well rather easily. Now when going to the way of creating our thing I will go through certain paths within Paramo and then I go back into Grasshopper and we're gonna create it basically there. So here we basically created three numbers like um, just numbers and then we also created integers to create a grid point system. If you have your grid point system, you basically would not see anything at all yet. It would be just be an empty canvas. And it doesn't really give us a way of looking at this. Anyhow, and this can, those grid points then get deconstructed into X and Y points. If we would have this within Grasshopper, we basically have our grid as well here that you can uh, create um, I'm just gonna disable this here. Our grid here that we created under sets, uh, no, vector, grid, and then we can create a grid. And here we have our X and Y direction, and then also how many those are here. Which is interesting because if you have your grid actually here in, um, uh, in um, Paramo, you don't change really the, you change the overall grid size. And you can go back and forth with it and uh, you don't change the amounts of it. You basically, it's inside of this uh, place. Anyhow, then we have basically, we take the uh, points and deconstruct it and have the X and Y coordinates. And uh, those coordinates then will be multiplied. And here again, we basically have our midpoints here. I just had, had to get the, um, from the cells, the centroids, and then we again gonna deconstruct this point. And once it's this, point, this point is deconstructed, we have our number slider, which gives us the option to increase and decrease uh, this number here. Um, and again, increase and decrease. What is interesting in Grasshopper, you have sliders. Here you can double click your um, node and you basically have uh, the values of the parameter itself. Then, and then you can obviously change the step size to the way you want, but it goes only with clicking um, back and forth. And I think you can also just um, put in the value yourself here. Whereas in Grasshopper, 
you have the value like this from the beginning to the end. And if you want to change it, you have to go to this menu to uh, change those values back and forth. Exactly. Um, what is then interesting that you basically, uh, here we have the um, thing created and we have our sinus function. And then I wanted to have some uh, more wheel room with uh, creating our uh, multiplication and then also have like, some kind of base size. Um, here I didn't actually do that, but if you would add this here, we basically do the addition, take a number slider and um, add like a certain base level to it on the X size and the same thing also with the Y size. I will do this a bit smaller. In this case, we actually have um, a, a certain amount. What is interesting um, is that here I had to put in actually an absolute value, which um, basically makes this number uh, positive at all times. If I would put this into the X size and into the Y size, you see that the grid is actually disappearing. And um, when I'm going back here, and increasing the uh, grid a little bit, as you see here. The grid, grid starts to, let me actually increase this here, the step size. Um, you see, actually I had to click OK. The grid starts to come back, but it only comes back after like one wave. So it cannot actually take negative numbers um, in this block. What is also interesting that uh, we basically created this block uh, which is on itself, if we we'll just act deactivate this here. Um, and I want to also create a different Boolean for that one here. And I'm gonna deactivate this here. And I'm also gonna deactivate the, the other place over here that we come get later. So we basically have our blocks itself. So it doesn't really um, create those rectangles that we had in Grasshopper itself. Um, where we have uh, our rectangles and then we had to use those rectangles and actually um, extrude them and only then basically or actually here you take the boundary surface and then once you have the boundary surface you're actually gonna extrude the whole thing and that's how you can get your end result. So that's a bit of a workaround. You can also make a boolean difference but this actually would take a lot of computing power whereas here we have our um, blocks that we defined here and they don't go into the negative. So we, again, we would take the absolutes in here as well to get uh, both sides of this wave uh, to same. Then um, we have this obviously, but then we also want to have our surrounding plate. And this plate we create from our base values that we have here. We can, by the way, also take them from the dimension values. And again, like we do like a shift click here and shift click there. And those dimension values you see down here as well. And they are basically your window to um, our basically grasshopper or not, I'm sorry, about our um, um, Archicad objects environment. So um, this, this is a way of knowing, okay, this object basically has those uh, X and Y values as like a bounding box within the space in ARCHICAD. And then we can take those dimensions, have them within our um, ARCHICAD environment and change those around and have them parametric parametrically change the object while we are in there. So, and um, we basically created this, this uh, shape here. And then this shape in the end will have a Boolean difference which can be found down here or when you click again the canvas. And we have to then also activate it to make it visible. So then we basically create this shape for itself. And again, if we would be in, um, in the grasshopper environment, uh, let's just try to get a similar result, more or less a higher number slider like this. Um, and then we're also gonna use the data dam in order to um, save some computing time because you see it takes some time here. And then we would have the same results. So what is interesting? Um, that uh, in the parent view, you don't really have um, the whole list 
or a tree structure that you normally have within Grasshopper. So you cannot like right click and like graft a tree or flatten the tree or um, put in shapes um, together in a way so they interact only after a certain series of lists kind of. Because in, in Rhino, um, if I have those two lists here for example, and I would graph one of them, I would have a different tree structure as you see here. Um, if I use the param viewer, um, there can be a tree structure and I guess this one is, is the, the, the one thing and then you have the other ones with uh, the others. And you see it would get then connected together in a different way because this one would have the first of the one value and then the other one it takes only this rectangle and so this one has two values whereas on the other ones is just one. So this is like something that can make things a little bit more complicated and um, the data branch structure could make things more complex but it's also very useful if you have more um, shapes and sizes that you want to interact your uh, model with. Whereas here I don't even really have the option to um, go back and forth with it. It's basically a kind of a more simplified version of that. However, you can still um, make the same kind of um, tricks and pieces that you would normally create uh, within um, a grasshopper maybe and then you need to export it around and go back and forth. And obviously there is a um, way of connecting those two together uh, with uh, like a connectivity uh, way of our, the bridge between ArchiCAD and um, Grasshopper, but this actually also is a very interesting way of interacting with the models because normally you would have your GDL kind of code, which kind of uh, it looks a bit like clunky, um, and it basically has. Um, and I just show you an image here. Um, you basically have this kind of code that defines. Um, I think it's based very based on like Visual Basic or Script or something like this. I'm not exactly sure or familiar with this language. That basically defines all those parameters and the dependencies. And uh, I think this is a, a better way of actually interacting with it. What is interesting um, is especially with those salt operations, once those things get have to be um, in a visual space, uh, you can use uh, salt difference intersect intersections and um, uh, union uh, in a way better way to um, control your shapes. They basically because it is based on meshes you have a um, more straightforward kind of intersection process which takes way less time whereas in Grasshopper here um, that's why I put the data time here we have about one second of computation time here and one more second when grafting it. And if I would do um, a solid intersection actually that would be here that would take uh, one from the other. I would just have it run now and you will see like it will uh, literally take, I would rather not do it because it would take a lot of computation time. It takes like one or two minutes to just calculate um, the piece itself to intersect the pieces out of it. It might be actually quicker with a, a mesh intersection, um, but uh, we'd rather not want to crash our system here. Anyhow, um, yeah, by the way, if it's red here, it basically means that it's not connected. So you have to put stuff here. So um, in the end, I think um, you can definitely use uh, Paramo in a very good way um, to use your models. And um, I think it's very useful if you would have a certain idea when creating and using your um, parametrically designed things within, um, within uh, ARCHICAD because it can make your things uh, way easier. And obviously, and um, well, it's kind of uh, import from file, export to file. Okay, and then I also can actually export those within other files. And there should also be a way of placing it but my ArchiCAD knowledge is so limited at the moment that I don't have any idea how to um, actually create those uh, in here. Oh, maybe I can put it in here like this. 
and I can just place it then. Wait, let me actually do this on the kind of life uh, setting. So I will actually, can I put this here? Um, and then I have the objects. Uh, and I'll just place it, right? Ah, oh, yeah, perfect. So now I have the place objects uh, within my environment here. And I think I should, uh, exactly, I should see it as well in here as well. And I think if we now, um, I don't know if I can actually, I might need to use, I can, I think I should be able to manipulate this as well now. But it really doesn't give me the option at the moment. Normally you can click your pieces. Uh, let me here change it over here. Ah oh, yeah, perfect. And if I would make it this bigger, let's select that. Okay. Then you have our your size directly within there. And you have your uh, facade or however you were liking it before. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty cool that you can just use your objects and uh, put it within your grasshopper environment, for example, as a facade or as some kind of uh, flooring system and then having it adapt to your needs while you're using it. Um, yeah, let me actually, I'm probably butchering everyone's uh, grasshopper or I'm, uh, oh yeah, and it, yeah, and it's actually interesting because I didn't, uh, define the size here. I just increase the size um, here within the uh, environment of uh, Archicad. However, I did not um, put any parameters in there. So right now, for example, if we go back to libraries and the contents and go to the param o manager and gonna change, we have the y value here, as you see. And uh, we have to connect it to uh, the block size, uh, which we had here. And then we, yeah, we use the height here instead. And we put the height into the size Z. And now we can obviously change the height in the thing here. And I modify them. And now it should update to our needs. And we have our uh, updated model. And now when I change the Y size, the model will automatically uh, adjust to the size as well. There should be more ways of actually manipulating my element here, but I could um, imagine exactly here, have the all the shapes and sizes, which are not really defined, but um, for example, the pen size, I can also manipulate within, uh, within the param over And I could imagine that you could actually have more values here that you want to adjust. For example, we have the sinus multiplier or the um, after the sinus multiplier. That could be very interesting for you as well to do. But uh, as of now, I did not really um, see any ways of how to manipulate those in here as well and get this data actually out. Um, anyway, I think it's very interesting that uh, Graphisoft is actually tackling this kind of idea with visual based programming as well that you had in Rhino already for some time. And uh, I think it's beautiful that people get cl more closer to it and have a very kind of um, easy entrance to the world of computational design and programming as well as think more efficient within the architecture and design industry. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something today and um, see you in the next one.